In a couple of years from now, it is possible that Britain will have decided to leave the European Union. The consequences would obviously be immense. And it's that spectre that will loom over the talks today between David Cameron and Angela Merkel, Chancellor of Europe's most economically powerful country, of course. They have plenty of other things to talk about. But for David Cameron, as for every other leader of the Tory party in recent history, it's our membership of the EU that gives him his worst nightmares. He's been forced by his party to agree to a referendum if he wins the election, and he desperately needs to win concessions from the rest of Europe on renegotiations if he is to stand a chance of winning that referendum and staying in Europe, which is what he wants. And in that negotiation, Mrs Merkel is crucial. So, what approach will he adopt at today's talk? Should he threaten or should he plead? Well, I'm joined by David Davis, former Europe Minister, of course, and Shadow Home Secretary, Conservative MP, on the sceptical side of the argument, and David McAllister, who, in spite of his name, is German leading CDU MEP. He's uh, a member of their national board, former Premier of Lower Saxony, CDU, of course, being Mrs Merkel's party. And, gentlemen, can I invite you to imagine that you are Cameron and Merkel today, and I will talk to you thus. It's very hard, I have to say, <laughs> um, David, to see you. Anyway, you, 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 you can see where I'm going with this. Yeah, right. Uh, David Davis, you're sitting there opposite Mrs Merkel. What will you say to her? Well, the first thing to understand is I'm not going to expect her at the end of today to sort of concede all my points. Right. She's got domestic issues to deal with herself on immigration. Including immigration, yes. Immigration being a very, very big one for her. She needs immigration for her economy to work. What I've got to do is to persuade her that the po prospect of us leaving is real. It's not just sabre-rattling. Germans going for sabre-rattling an awful lot. They look, look at what they're doing at the moment. They were virtually threatening Greece with exit from the euro. They don't mean it, they're, but, they're, but they're talking it up. So we've got to get across to her that there should be no mutual misunderstanding about this. If there's not big changes, Britain, Cameron doesn't want us to leave, you know. Uh, if I'm playing David Cameron, I don't want us to leave, but I may well face the prospect that you, the, the, the people tell me I've got to leave. So that's the first thing to get across, that this is not say Brackley, this is for real, and the changes are material. We won't get out of... Uh, Angela Merkel today, uh, the concessions on the changes, that will happen. If None happens. at all. You're not expecting, by, as David Cameron, you're not expecting by the end of the day even a hint that she will help on immigration. Well, she may she may some, say something nice about sort of uh, about benefit controls, but even that I think is unlikely. Th bear in mind the way these things work. The drafts already the draft communique at the end of the day is already written. Isn't yeah, it? but written. then you're <laughs> sitting there without yeah. necessarily having. But we're still we're still trying to press. But mm. she you know she may make some concessions like that. But the free movement to peoples issue, which is fundamental to this, uh, is it, it it will not be solved just by benefit changes. If I'm a Romanian, I. I can get a five times increase in my pay. Well, first of all, I can get a job. And secondly, I can get a five times increase in my pay by coming to London. Right. If I were Romanian, I'd be in London. Right. David McAllister, you are Angela Merkel. What will you say to uh, David Cameron? Well, first of all, good morning from Brussels. Good morning. Well, the reason uh, for Angela Merkel's visit to London is for German presidency of the G7 yeah. uh, this year. Uh, so the talks between Angela Merkel and David Cameron will lay groundwork for the G7 summit being held in Bavaria uh, in June this year. So the two will be discussing a lot of international questions about how we can get our economy more competitive on a European and global level. And it will be about uh, foreign affairs and security affairs from Ukraine to all sorts of international conflict. So that is actually the main reason for Angela Merkel's visit. Besides that, they will be probably be talking about uh, certain concerns of the British government uh, with regards to the European Union. And I would always say Germans are ready to talk to London about British demands in a fair and reasonable manner. But we're very clear, we are the UK's partner in Europe and we are interested that the United Kingdom stays in the European Union. And it Union. might be that the only way to keep us in Europe is to make serious concessions, not just the odd gesture um, of social security payments or whatever it happens to be, to make serious concessions towards David Cameron so that he can go, when the, if we have the referendum, he can go to the electorate and say, look... 
it's going to be there, there are going to be controls over the free movement of people when it comes yeah, well, down but, to it. That's the essence of it. But no reasonable politician can ignore the fact that during the next five years we will have to find solutions for the political concerns of the United Kingdom. We have to do this if we want to keep the United Kingdom within the European Union. So uh, I will work and uh, many of us will work for a fair deal with Britain. But it must be a deal that accepts the specificities of the United Kingdom in the EU on the one hand, while allowing the member states of the Eurozone to integrate further. And the question is whether that can happen, whether those are compatible, David Davis. Yeah, um, I think they are. I think it is possible, but it will involve treaty change. I mean, this is not something to be done on the edges. I mean, the most fundamental, the most difficult issue is not immigration. The most difficult issue is what they call the red card, the ability to to say to the European Union, I'm sorry, this is too much. We actually can't do this. We, Britain, must be able to opt out. And that requirement... The, the constitutional requirement is very, very fundamental and will go to the heart of the argument uh, when it comes around. Now, it's possible, it's doable, but it will be difficult. And if we don't have Germany on side, it will be impossible. And so, my so Germ- Mr McAllister's right there in, in that respect. Might Germany come on side on, in, in, in that area, uh, Mr McAllister? Look... We've got to wait what will actually happen now in the United Kingdom. We've got to wait what will happen at the elections. And, of course, uh, the people in the United Kingdom will then decide um, what happens and Germany will respect any decision. But this decision, of course, concerns us in Germany directly. So we will be ready to debate all political questions in a reasonable and fair manner. But the United Kingdom will need to understand that in the Eurozone, we need more Europe, not less. That's our decision. And the other thing is that we fully understand the issues the Prime Minister has raised on immigration. But on the other hand, the integrity of the single market and its four freedoms are out of the questions. And if we will have to change the treaties or not, I think that's a question which can only be answered once the British government has actually made concrete proposals after the next elections. And and that's it, isn't it, um, David Davis? He summed it up in that more Europe, not less. More Europe, not less is not acceptable to your wing of the Conservative Party and indeed to many other people in this country. I'm, I'm I'm putting that one to David Davis. If but I may, excuse me, I said within the Eurozone, not within the European not Union. Not within the European Union. Yeah, and that may, that may be the key to this, uh, because the Eurozone countries clearly are integrationist. They have to be. You cannot run a Eurozone. You cannot run what is effectively a super nation uh, with their own uh, currency that will in due course be some degree of tax harmonisation, I'm sure. Well, you can argue uh, that you should never have set it up in the first place well, without all of that. I would, but then, <laughs> in fact, I did argue that when it was set up in the first place because I was Europe Minister at the time. But the simple truth is that the, the answer to this may be a Eurozone which runs in a rather different direction to all the non-Eurozone countries. But that's a really, really big change. That's a really, really big treaty change. Hollander, the French won't like that. A number of the small European countries won't like that. But actually, that's probably where we're going. And 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 David McAllister, final thought from you. When you talk about we must see how the United Kingdom um, decides one way or the other, and then we can do X, Y, and Z. The fact is that what Germany decides, the way Germany deals with our requests, demands, if you like, is going materially to affect how we decide, isn't it? That's the point. It's not as if you're a kind of bystander watching what's happening here and saying, OK, well, now we will accommodate whatever decision has been reached. You're instrumental in that decision. Well, this morning we've been talking about differences between London and Berlin. I would like to underline how much... Uh, how good the relation is between our countries, how close the relationship is between Angela Merkel and David Cameron, and that we have similar views on growth, on competitiveness, on financial stability, on free trade or fighting red tape. So there's a lot of common ground between Germany and Britain when it comes to the European Union, and I think we will find a reasonable and decent solution for the British proposals, but let's wait and see what actually happens in 2015. David McAllister, David Davis, thank you both very much.